let's talk about some classic envelopes. Classic envelopes are envelopes that are commonly used, mimic some real instruments, and are very useful. The first envelope I want to describe is the string or bell envelope. Strings and bells, once plucked or hit, have to decay, and once they are hit, you cannot control their volume. This means that the sustain has to be on zero, because no bell or string has an infinite sustain. The attack has to be zero, since all of the strings start abruptly and then decay slowly. And the decay has to be long. The release also has to be long, if we want to imitate a string that cannot be damped, like the strings of the harp or a bell. The next envelope is a piano envelope, or a guitar bass envelope. This envelope is similar to the string envelope, only it has zero release. This means that whenever the player wants to, he can let go of the note, and the sound will stop. Just like a piano that uses dampers, or a bass guitar when you lift up your finger to stop the note. What you're hearing now, the small clicks, is a common problem with envelopes. Envelopes are originally intended to create slowly evolving waveforms. Those waveforms are usually much lower than audio rate. In our case, we have the attack set to zero and the release set to zero. The clicks are because the envelope is cutting the sound too abruptly. The speed of the envelope, once it is faster than the original sound, for instance, if you have a wave that has a cycle speed, if the envelope rises faster than it, then you will hear a small click. The easy way to fix it is just to tune your attack and release times to be a bit longer. This is the bass envelope. My favorite and most simple envelope is the lead envelope. The lead envelope is as loud as it can be for the longest duration it can be. It is also called a get envelope. It has a zero attack time, zero release time, or at least the minimum possible without getting a click. Maximum sustain. I use it for making sounds that need to stick out. I know the synthesizer is not the best, but it's just for demonstrating the basics. On this envelope, the decay does not matter, of course. As we said earlier. Another envelope that is very useful is the pad envelope. Pad envelope is a long attack and long release and full sustain. This enables the synthesizer to fade in and out while the player lifts his fingers off the keyboard. One last envelope that is used often is very similar to the piano envelope, only much shorter. This is the sequence envelope. This is a very short, pizzicato-like envelope. It is used for creating sequences and fast accompaniment parts. Several things not to do in an envelope. First of all, before you tune the knobs, Think, what kind of envelope do you want? Second of all, never tune your sustain to the middle area unless you know what you're doing and know what kind of result you're expecting. In 80% of the cases, the sustain should be on maximum or on minimum. Sustain in the middle zone, especially when the envelope controls the amplifier, is rarely used and is not very natural sounding. A closed envelope will usually give you just a small click. This is because the attack is very fast and the decay is very fast and it just increases and decreases the envelope very quickly enough to just let a small click pass through. For making punchy sounds, you would usually want to have your attack on zero. If you want to have less punchy sounds, you would open your attack a bit.
that's it for the basics of the envelope. This is the time to go and practice your envelopes. I have to remind you that the amplifier envelope is the single most important module on any synthesizer. This is the module that defines how our brain interprets the sound, what kind of instrument it is. If you want to download this uh, small gadget to experiment with an IDSR and turn the knobs yourself, you can do it on synthschool.com. I hope you enjoyed this short video. Happy patching!